Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on a Jackson Jekyll Monster High doll and making him into Bruce Campbell as Ash Williams from the Evil Dead movies and Ash vs. Evil Dead TV series. I'll be showing you how I modify the face, the face up, how I style the hair, and how I made his chainsaw hand. So after removing the factory paint and fa the face paint and hair, I rerouted him with some alpaca yarn and covered it up so I could protect it while working on the rest of the doll. I used an X-Acto knife to remove this eyebrow ring that Jackson Jekyll has, and now I'm sanding it down with a nail file. So I wanted to do some modifications to his face. Bruce Campbell has a longer nose and longer chin, so I was heating up the vinyl and kind of stretching it out while it cools. I'd already done the same to the jawline a little bit. Jackson Jek Jekyll has a much sharper jawline than Bruce Campbell, so I uh, molded it a little bit after heating it like I'm doing here. So just pulling the nose down while it cools and it makes it a little bit longer. And then I use uh, tweezers to pull it down, but I'm being extra careful not to squeeze too tightly and being as gentle as possible because I don't want to make any unnecessary marks or pop a hole through the vinyl while it's hot. So this is just a series of heating it up a little bit and molding it a little bit. And then for the chin, I used this chopstick while it was super hot and held it in there for a while, a lot longer than it appears in this sped up video. Then I took some of this peach color uh, acrylic paint and painted over that eyebrow ring to blend, blend it in just a little bit better. Then I sealed him with four coats of Mr. Super Clear and started shaping the eyes. I wanted to give him sort of a little sneer or squint, so I made one of the eyes a little bit squintier than the other. Now I'm using some pan pastel to do the shading. The paintbrush I'm using is an older paintbrush. It's just a very tiny round brush that I cut down. I like to cut them down into like a stencil type brush so it really works well with uh, shading small areas. So when working on that lower lip, I was very, uh, made it, worked very hard to make it a small lip so that the bottom, it would kind of extend the chin a little bit. I'm using several reference photos to make the, the expression that I wanted as well as capture as many characteristics as I could. For the, the lines and character in his face, I shaded out the areas as while well, referencing the photos. And then after I did the shading, then I started to add a little bit of line work in with the watercolor pencil. So after I add a little bit of pan pastel to my paintbrush, then I dab it a little bit on the paper towels, just so it's not so much product that I'm adding on there, just kind of controls it a little bit better. When I make an area too dark or I feel like it needs blended, I use some of the pan pastel colorless blender on a Q-tip or one of these micro brushes to blend it in a little bit. I 
think my best strategy here was to not be afraid to use the darkest darks for the lines because some of his face facial lines were super dark. It's definitely a little bit out of my comfort zone or any face-up that I've done before. I haven't done very many men, but this one was probably very different than anything I've done. So I'm using a little bit of a custom mix of pink there to add a little bit of color to some of the areas in his cheeks and his lip and chin and forehead just to give him some color but not give him some makeup like blush. <laughs> so I'm adding some, this may look like white but I think it's actually a peach tint color for some uh, highlights. At this point, I would have added a couple of coats of Mr. Super Clear to protect my work before. I usually do that before doing the eyebrows because I often do erase the eyebrows a good bit. Luckily, his eyebrows were quite messy, <laughs> so it kind of worked in my, to my advantage. So just darkening up some lines after adding those highlights and blush, I just need to kind of go back and, and darken up the areas that I had shaded earlier. At this point, to me, he looks a little like Phil Dunphy from Modern Family, <laughs> but it's kind of close to ash, I guess. <laughs> so I'm blending in the irises. I think he has brown eyes. I can't remember, but that's what it looks like here as I'm trying to do this voiceover. I'm using a couple of shades of, uh, from Karen Dosh and there's a Karen Dosh Super Color as well as the uh, Museum Aquarelle. There I was using a um, X-Acto knife. Sometimes I'll use an X-Acto knife to erase a small area, just kind of lift it rather than use an eraser. It's helpful when I don't want to smudge or smear or erase a large area. I just want to lift up, up a little bit of product. So I use an X-Acto knife for that. It, help, it helps a lot. Now I'm getting a little frustrated with these Derwent watercolor pencils. I pick them up at a craft store up the street and I think they kind of like dropped them or something because every one I have, I, I have to sharpen it all the way about halfway down before I can use it because it keeps breaking. So if you're not, if you drop your pencils, then it breaks the lead and I'm thinking they may have done that in the store. Bummer. So I'm just adding some extra highlighting or shading rather in the eyes and not forgetting the ears. And I did carry the color down onto the body. Uh, you can see the face now is a different color than the neck. So I did do some body blushing later and shading. Added some tiny little eyelashes. It was really difficult not to do my usual style of eyelashes, but didn't think they quite worked here. <laughs> so there he is, Phil Dunphy. <laughs> so pretty close to Ash. I, I like the character um, that I gave his face and this, the expression anyway. And once he's put together with his costume, I think it all came together. So onto the hair. So I uh, sectioned out the hair. The top part uh, I sectioned out because I knew I was going to cut the bottom section very short. So I just pulled that out and cut. And 
and then just shaped it up a little bit to make sure it was even. So for the rest of the hair, I pulled out sections and thinned them with a little bit more with some thinning shears. And then I added some water and some of this unscented styling gel and then flat ironed them. So I just went section by section doing that thinning, adding water, adding gel, and flat ironing. And then it just lays really nicely after taking those steps. And then of course cutting it to the length that I need to sort of blend in the bottom portion of the hair to the top portion of the hair, which is a little bit longer. Also, I'll mention that I did uh, root some sideburns on this. The doll itself didn't have sideburns, so I drew like the shape of his hairline around, like you see the side coming down in the front near the eye and then looping down into a sideburn. I drew that on with a black pencil first and then I rooted it into that area to give him some sideburns. using my spray bottle of water and covering the face while I do that. At this point I sealed him quite a bit so the water shouldn't affect it, but I still want to protect it. If you give about at least four or five coats of Mr. Super Clear good coats, then your work should be protected. If you're using the Mr. Super Clear UV cut flat, which I use, I'm not sure about the other kinds. So because it's wet and has the gel in it, I can mold it a little bit once I have it cut the way I want. And it will stay pretty well because I'm using the gel. I was worried about it drying and then puffing up or losing its shape, but because I have the gel in there, it keeps it pretty good. So just shaping it up a little bit. I did go back a little bit later, I'm just brushing away the little bits, but I did go back a little bit later, trim up the top a little bit more. And here I'm adding a little bit of pan pastel in white just to give him some gray in his sideburns. So he's a little bit older. It's the older version, I guess, from the TV series. <laughs> so on to the um, chainsaw. So I found this chainsaw at a toy store or a Dollar Tree, I think, and a while back joked that we would make an ash doll with it. And so I bought it just in case. And it came with a package of, I think, some other toys, but I kept this. And I thought for this convention, this was made for the Mad Monster Party that was uh, last month. And uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and pull it out and make it. I debated a little bit whether or not I would sculpt one myself, but I just didn't think that I could do the the tiny chain around it as well as and clean as this one is. I also wanted it to be a little bit longer, so I debated for a while. Uh, but I think ultimately I thought it would look best if I used this toy because I knew that I could do some good paint work with it. So what I'm doing is I felt really funny about cutting off his hand. So I wanted to make it so that I could just insert the hand in. I'm so weird. <laughs> I just wanted to be able to insert the hand in the toy. Um, so what I did was uh, heated it up so it would, the plastic would melt a little bit, make it a little bit easier to cut. So I cut out the inside to fit the hand. And then I'm cutting this little piece of warbler. It was a little bit easier to do this than with clay. Cutting it out to the shape of the chainsaw and then I'm um, inserting his hand and that way I could just lay the piece over top of it. It was a little more difficult than it sounds because it, once I cut it, his hand didn't really fit in there as well as I wanted it to. So I just stretched it out a little bit to make a fitted piece. So 
So once I had that fitted piece, I let it cool. I cut it, you know, to, to size. And then I let it cool and then I got some super glue and put it, it's a super glue gel. So it is a little bit more three dimensional than regular super glue. So a, a little more like that, uh, I can't remember what glue I'm trying to, to think of, but it's, it's a little bit more like hot glue if it's a gel. So I added it to the inside and around the edges and then put the piece over top of it and then use some clips just to let it dry. Then I took another piece of Warbler to shape around the wrist to give it a, give it a, the look of the piece that comes up over, um, So like in the movie, he's got some straps to hold the chainsaw on. So I'm just molding that and then later I make some straps out of uh, some vinyl to give it like a leather buckle look. But this is the general shape. So first to paint it, I use this chalkboard paint. It's one of my favorite black paints I use for a lot of different things because it's similar to a primer in that it sticks to the product very well. And then I painted the part of the chainsaw red. And then I got some of this um, like wax paint that you could see me use in a couple of my previous videos in the collab video I showed more in more detail but it's in silver and I'm just doing um, some detail to the chain and the inside to give it a silver look so like I said once I detailed that up I made a little like a brown strap to hold it around his wrist a little bit better with a little buckle and there is the chainsaw so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already at the time I'm making this video this doll has sold but there are a couple more dolls available in the shop so make sure to check out the Etsy shop link in the description box below I hope you guys are having a great day thanks so much for watching bye